here in our third example of how to solve problems in motion in one dimension, we have an aircraft carrier, it kind of looks like one, and a fighter jet taking off from the aircraft carrier. Let's say that it speeds up over a distance of 307 feet from zero to 173 miles per hour. And the question is, how long did it take? And what was the acceleration of that plane? So we're going to write down the equation of kinematics. First one is V equals V sub naught plus AT. Second one is X equals X sub naught plus V sub naught T plus one half AT squared. And the third one is V squared equals V initial squared plus two AX. All right, so based upon what's given in the three equations, how should we go about solving this problem? So we, we're not given the time, so when we're not given the time, I'm inclined to look at this third equation right there because we don't need the time there. We are given the final velocity, and we are given the initial velocity, and we know the distance, so I can use this equation to find the acceleration. So bingo, there's our candidate. Let's go ahead and use that equation to find the acceleration of that takeoff. All right, so I'm going to use that equation to solve for A. So V squared equals V initial squared, plus 2a times the distance traveled. I did write x, but we should probably write delta x, the amount of distance traveled. It doesn't really matter if you use delta x or x, it's whatever you feel most comfortable with. All right, so rearranging the equation a little bit, I can say that v squared minus v initial squared is equal to 2a delta x, and so if I now divide both sides of the equation by 2 delta x and turn it around, I can then say that acceleration is equal to v squared minus v initial squared divided by 2 times the distance traveled. Now, notice that the distance is in terms of feet and the velocity is in terms of miles per hour. So we have to convert that from miles per hour to feet per second. So how do we do that? 173 miles per hour. The first conversion, we want to go to feet per miles. In the second conversion, we need seconds in the bottom instead of hours. So notice, I put miles in the bottom to cancel out miles, I end up with feet at the top. I put hours at the top so I can cancel and end up with seconds in the bottom. Now I have to have the conversion factor. One mile is 5,280 feet, and one hour is 3,600 seconds. So Converting from miles per hour to feet per second, we multiply by 5280 and divide by 3600. So 173 times 5280 divided by 3600 is, and so that, uh, that would be equal to 253.7 feet per second. I just kept an extra significant figure so I wouldn't have a round off error. All right, now let's plug all that in here. So final velocity would be 253.7 feet per second. We have to square that. Initial velocity is zero, starts from rest, times two times the distance of 307 feet. All right, let's find out what that's equal to. So we square that amount. We divide by two and we divide by 307 and we get 104.9, 104.9 feet per second squared. That's the acceleration. All right, now that we have the acceleration, we now have to find the time, the other unknown. So what equation can I use now? Well, let's look over here. I know my final velocity, I know my initial velocity, I know my acceleration, I can now use this equation to find the time. Of course, I do have to rearrange the equation. So first of all, let's write V equals V sub naught plus AT. First I move the V sub naught across, so that becomes minus V sub naught equals AT. Then divide both sides by the acceleration, flip the equation around, so we have time is equal to V minus V sub naught divided by the acceleration. Final velocity, 253.7 feet per second. Initial velocity is zero. Let me move over here so you can see what I just wrote. Now we divide by the acceleration, which we found to be 104.9 feet per second squared. All right, let's find out what that is equal to. So we take the inverse of that times 253.7 equals, and it is 2.42 seconds. 
t equals 2.42 seconds. So in just about two and a half seconds, that airplane takes off from the aircraft carrier. Now, here's another interesting part. How fast of an acceleration is that? How large of an acceleration is that? Well, realizing that when you drop an object and it falls to the earth, it accelerates at a rate of 32 feet per second squared. So I can actually figure out how many g's that is. How many times acceleration due to gravity? So a is equal to 104.9 feet per second squared. And I can multiply that times g's divided by 32 feet per second squared. So 1g is 32 feet per second squared. Notice I can then convert that into number of g's. That's the way we, we talk about an acceleration that's in the order of magnitudes of, of uh, the acceleration of gravity. So take 104.9 divided by 32. It's 3.28 g. So a equals 3.28 g's. So the acceleration that the pilot feels when that uh, airplane takes off an aircraft carrier is more than three times the acceleration of gravity, which means it, the person, let's say a 150 pound pilot takes off, that pilot will feel like he weighs 500 pounds on takeoff. So a lot of force is acting on, on the pilot. But anyway, going back to the summary here, we have a plane taking off, distance is known, initial velocity is zero, Final velocity is known, we have to convert to feet per second. We use the two equations of kinematics, this one first because it doesn't have time in it to find acceleration. Then we plug the acceleration in here to find the time. And that's how you solve that problem.